Hi, today I'm going to be talking about rosacea and skin redness. Rosacea affects both men and women, but it's three times more common in women. There are lots of different types, but I thought today I'd mainly focus on general skin redness and the type which manifests itself with red lumps, bumps and pimples. This is often the type which is misdiagnosed as acne. There are also lots of triggers, but I'll talk about them more throughout the video. I have a wonderful model today. Her name's Danny, and she's being super kind, generous, and brave to offer to be completely barefaced on camera and talk about some of the issues that she's been having and some of the products actually that she's finding really useful. I thought for, in terms of the look, I wouldn't do a natural look because I think it's, um, People expect, you know, rosacea, sensitive skin. They expect me to do a very kind of natural look. So I thought I'd do more of a bold statement look. And also I thought I'd use the color red because often women who have a lot of red skin issues steer away from using red, even though they might like to. And I'm going to show you how you can. So I hope you like the look. So we're gonna start with skincare because obviously it's really important. I'm going to use this Ren Evercalm uh, moisturizer because this is what you're using at the moment isn't it Danny yes it is. and you find it to be really moisturizing but not too heavy yeah exactly that I feel like it's quite light which is really good for my skin yeah because you have that oiliness but at the same time really sensitive so yeah it's very kind of awkward right <laughs> very awkward <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to apply a light layer I'm going to apply it with a brush so I'm not rubbing your skin as well because I don't want to kind of aggravate it and I think that's something to really bear in mind if you have reactive skin of any type, you know, whether it be dry and reactive or oily and reactive, lots of kind of um, hand contact and rubbing is not good. Yeah, that's what my mum always said. Stop touching your face. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing I'm going to use is an SPF. This is 40. This is the Super City Block. Very importantly, it's oil free, which I think you don't want to use products which are laden with oil. And secondly, it's a nice light sort of yellowy tone to it, which is really good for counteracting the redness because you don't want to use anything that's too green. Sometimes products can be very, very green and they leave an ashy sort of strange white haze over the skin. Whereas this one, as well as being a good SPF and oil free, it just has that very subtle tint. So of course, Triggers are a really big thing for rosacea sufferers and redness and lots of people I've spoken to say it is very much triggered by the sun which is why SPF is so important but there are other things as well. I mean do you have any particular triggers Danny? Yeah absolutely, sun's definitely one of them but it's also just general changes of weather mm -hmm. so just hot cold or when, when the winter kicks in it always breaks out. Does it? Yeah. And sometimes it can be spicy food or hormonal or... Both of those things. Everyone's got a different kind of story. So definitely keep up with the SPF. I'll put a little bit on your neck as well. Some other good products I have in my kit are these Redness Relief Emulsion, which is for oily skin, or Cream, which is for dry skin, um, by Aven. And these are good because they do have a tint of green, but it's very subtle. Um, and it doesn't leave that kind of ashy, ashy thing on the skin. So for foundation, I'm looking at things which are oil-free and long-lasting and also that I can put on in quite a thin layer and build up if I need to. I'm thinking about using double wear and Danny, this is, you usually use Studio um, yeah, that's right. Fix, yeah, which are both really good. I think I am going to go for the double wear. So we're going to start applying that in quite a thinnish layer and it's got good coverage so you don't need a ton. I'm just going to pat that into place and just blend out. And I think the colour is quite important. We don't want to use anything that's got too much pink in because it will emphasise the redness. So this one is a slightly more yellow toned base to it, which firstly will tone in really well with your body, which is warmer. And it will also help to counteract any redness. And then in the areas we need to, we can build up. And then you can always go in with a little bit more foundation in any of the areas that you need to. You can use fingers, you can use a brush, you could use a kabuki brush, whatever feels the most gentle to you because you don't want to aggravate your skin. Mainly, um, the cheek area tends to be 
the area that gets the angriest. But obviously, rosacea can affect anywhere. Um, so you might find it's more on your jawline or around your mouth area or in fact around your nose as well. You were saying you've just got it more around your nose now than you usually do. Yeah, I'm not sure why, but... Maybe it's the weather. Yeah. It could be anything, I guess. So that's a really nice base, not too shiny, a little bit of a sheen, but it sets to sort of a velvety finish, so it's great for oily skin, really, really good for covering and long-lasting. Another type of foundation that lots of rosacea sufferers like using are the mineral powder foundations. This one's Bare Minerals, but there's different brands available. I personally don't like to use them all over because they really build up a lot and I think find them quite shiny in, in daylight, but that's my personal opinion. Um, and I like to use them really just at the end to kind of finish off. Um, that's when I personally think they work best. So on to concealer, which is really important because if you do have some extra redness on the cheeks, you don't just want to keep piling on the foundation all over your face. Um, or you may just have the odd breakout. Um, the best type of concealers are the really intense coverage ones. These are more creamy ones, so either if you like a creamy texture or if you have dry skin, Cover FX, Amazing Concealer by Amazing Cosmetics or Keramask. These are all very creamy and very dense, so really good if you, um, as I say, if you're dry. The other type are more of the, the drier textured ones, so you've got Derma Blend in the stick. They also do the foundation, which if you prefer a creamier texture is great. Um, or something like the Double Wear Stay In Place also has like quite a dry finish to it. But I'm going to use Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage. It's really oil free. It's quite a dry one, but it's great if you're oily skinned. Um, it can also work if you're a little bit dry, but then you have to mix it with some foundation, but it goes on brilliantly. Just a a drop of foundation will really help to smooth it. And this is great just for really targeting any major red little bits of skin or if you have any particular spots. So you can just go in and cover if you have a breakout. Just make sure you blend those edges really well. So onto the rest of the makeup and Starting with eyes, I'm going to do a very quite simple wash of mineral powder eyeshadow. And this is a very pretty kind of neutral beige shade. So onto mascara, and if you do suffer with rosacea around your eyes, then you need to be very, very careful what you're using. A good solution may be a more natural mascara, something like Organic Glam or La Vera, which have most of the known irritants taken out. Or you could use a tube, like um, tube technology like DHC. And the reason these types of mascaras are very good is because when it comes to removing them, firstly, they're very long lasting. So if you are quite watery around the eyes, they're going to stay on. And secondly, when you come to remove them, you don't need to do any of that rubbing or soaking in oil that you have to do if you use a waterproof you literally just need warm water and it comes off that way so really good because it still gives you a really nice effect as well let's have a look into the lens there so onto brows and i'm going to use the anastasia let's blend this in a bit powder and this is in ash brown so it's not too warm. I'm just going to really buff that in. I think with such blonde hair, you have to be really careful about which colour you use. Do you find that, Danny, that it can get, if it's got any red in it, it can get really absolutely weird looking? And it's the biggest mistake I make occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> so before I do lips and cheeks, I'm just going to do a tiny little bit of powdering. This is a mineral powder actually foundation so it has a little bit of coverage as well and it'll just set although as I say the foundation I've used is good for oily skin so it doesn't really need a lot of powdering unless you're excessively oily but I think it's just a nice kind of finishing touch really for the skin so on to lips and cheeks I'm going to do quite a bright lip because I think it'll look 
I think it'll suit you and I think it'll look lovely. Um, for blush, I'm going to do this quite warm rose colour and this is by Bare Minerals. It is a little bit pinky but I think it's quite good not to go too orangey in a way if you have got a lot of red in your skin because it just is too far away from your natural skin tone but at the same time you don't want to go really almost too pink so once you've taken down the redness it is quite nice just to put a little bit of colour back in and you can see it's quite subtle but um, not only will it sort of shape the face but it's also just going to keep you looking nice and healthy. I'm quite often scared to use blusher just because of the underlying redness. And yeah, and if you use something that was a little bit lighter on the foundation, you had a bit more colour coming through, you might not need to. But I think because we have kind of used concealer, we've taken out all the colour, it's quite nice just to have a little bit of that natural colour. And I'm just really hardly touching the skin because obviously we've done a bit of concealer here. It's long lasting concealer and we've used a little bit of powder on top. So if you're very gentle with your powder blusher, there's no reason why you should disturb that underneath. It's only when you start rubbing or pressing too hard. So a nice soft brush, very gently applied, means that you can get away with using a very subtle, nice, natural coloured blush. I really like the look of the uh, blusher. I'm always quite scared to use the ready tones mm, because of my underlying colour. Yeah. But I end up looking unnatural because I've got bronzer on, so much bronzer, trying to get that sort of definition. Okay, so normally you just put loads of yeah. bronzer on. If you want to get that definition, then use something like um, a proper sculpting powder. Mm -hmm. Kevin O'Quanda do a good one, which is more like a really natural kind of light, ashy brown tone. So okay. it's not too orangey. And that way you could go in and do a little bit of sculpting. Yeah. Actually, it would look really nice as well. Do you know what? Let's do that. So this kind of a colour... I'd never pick that up. <laughs> no, but it's going to give you, honestly, a more natural contour. Because if you're using quite an orangey bronze and you've got all this redness in your skin, the mix is going to be quite muddy. Whereas we've got this lo lovely, soft kind of rosiness. And then if we go in now with this colour, it's kind of mimicking the shadow more than it's trying to create an unnatural shade there. So you're getting that shape. So but much more natural. It's If you look straight ahead now as well, you get more of a defined look, but without being fake looking. So because you've got an audition today, I think you should wear a really bright lip because we don't want to think like rosacea, sensitive skin, you've got to have really natural looking makeup. So I want to use this colour on you, which is a really bright pinky red, but I think it's going to look beautiful on you. It's a confident colour. <laughs> it's a confident colour and it has that pinky undertone, so it'll sit well with your skin i think it'll sit well with your hair color as well one of my problems when i put on bright lipstick is i always i don't know if i touch my face too much but i always end up smudging it and having it on my hands and all over the place okay let me show you, you. Well, it's not really about the brand it's more about the application i okay. think i mean you can obviously get matte lipsticks which stay on longer or long lasting ones but i think a lot of it is in the technique so just apply a really small amount to start with and really press it into the lip. So it's like you're kind of creating this stain. I mean, even less product than that, actually, I put too much on. Um, and we're just gonna follow your natural lip line. So just gonna really almost like push it into the lips. By using a small amount and really pushing it into the lips, you're kind of getting it right down to the base. Now, I'm gonna blot that really well. So just put your lips together for me, actually to start with together. I'm just going to take off the kind of colour. So we've got this real stain thing going on. Blot there. So that is your lips kind of stained with the colour. And then I'm going to go back in with a second layer. You could do this straight from the bullet, but I'm using a lip brush just because I'm going to bring the, your top lip up slightly. Or you could do it with a lip pencil as well. You could go over this stain with a pencil and do any shaping and then just fill in the colour and if you want extra stain power you can give that layer a little blot as well and then just touch up from the bullet and then you've got that in your bag if you do want to do any touch-ups today but that should pretty much stay on really well 
And I'm going to give you this lip colour, actually. I think it looks beautiful on you. Thank you. I, lo I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. It's definitely not the sort of colour that I would normally go for at all, but it looks really good, nice. Right? I love it, yeah. I think that's you done. I think you're finished. I think it's really nice because obviously we've taken the redness out of your skin and we've covered any little blemishes. So but I think your skin still looks really fresh. It still has that nice sheen um and i think having that lovely pop of color on your lips which i just think suits you so well it's such a different look for me it really <laughs> is i usually overload it on the eyes as well and the and bronzer <laughs> i think i actually look kind of younger with my eyes sort of less yeah you look really covered in eyeliner <laughs> mm, often is the case thank you so much